uh, like to thank you for organizing and for inviting me and for giving me this opportunity to um, present the topic of incorporation of uh, the Cyprus company and um, uh, the topic of bank account opening and the issues which can arise during this process and the challenges and how we face them. And before I start um, uh, talking about incorporation of the Cyprus company, I would like to say a few words about Cyprus. I know that everybody knows about Cyprus because uh, it's uh, quite close um, state to Israel, uh, but um, I will say a few words. Uh, Cy uh, Cyprus gained its independence in 1960 from Britain and became a EU member in 2004. And um, because of the influence during many years of Britain, we have a common law system and we basically still have um, many features uh, in the law system which we inherited from the British presence. Uh, Cyprus also became, from the 1st of January 2008, um, member of Eurozone, so we have from 2008 euro currency, and now Cyprus is in, is in the process of joining the Schengen area. Um, the latest development was that uh, the Cyprus uh, agreed on the um, sharing information with uh, Schengen zone members um, on the um, uh, citizens uh, which are crossing the borders. So I believe this will happen sooner or later, just for your information. Um, there are a lot of benefits if we are talking about incorporation of company in Cyprus. I will name just a few of them. Uh, of course, there are much more, but uh, the main, I guess, which is considered was by, by everybody as the main uh, benefit of incorporation of Cyprus company is a corporate income tax rate, which is 12.5, and it's um, one of the lowest in the European Union. So uh, the, this makes, first of all, Cyprus is so attractive. Uh, Cyprus uh, has no taxes on dividends, so if you are uh, the owner of the Cyprus company and you are um, getting income from your company and you are taking a decision on distribution of dividends, you will not pay taxes on them. Uh, also, Cyprus has more than 65 uh, double taxation treaties. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, now um, tax treaty with uh, Israel, but hopefully in future, someday we will have as well with Israel. But uh, for the cases when you have, for example, um, subsidiaries in European countries, um, and basically with all European countries, Cyprus has agreements with former uh, USSR states, um, with Middle East states, um, uh, you can gain actually um, the benefits from the double tax treaties on withholding taxes. Uh, Cyprus as well is a wide European Union jurisdiction, which is uh, quite important right now because there are um, a lot of jurisdictions which are in a gray list, which are not cooperative jurisdictions, it's a blacklist. And uh, also Cyprus is a man member of MoneyWall. It's a committee of experts on the evaluation of anti-money laundering measures and the financing of terrorism. It's an organization quite similar to FATF. I believe many of you know uh, about this organization. So basically, uh, these uh, organizations, uh, they are following um, how the countries adopted in their national legislation the anti-money laundering rules and how they are fighting money laundering and terrorist financing in their states. And talking about uh, this um, issue of um, fighting money laundering, I would like to say that Cyprus uh, got very um, positive report in November 2022. Uh, it was um, published by Manival. Uh, basically, it's a report on the level 
of um, money laundering and fighting money laundering in the country on the level of corruption and uh, really if you it's very easy to find this report in internet um, if you see it it's it's a very really uh, positive report on the progress of cyprus how cyprus um, has uh, developed its legislation and how um, all the rules were set uh, set up according to the EU regulations. And one of the um, uh, regulations in this um, field is um, um, a law which was adopted in 2021 by the Cyprus Parliament. Uh, and um, basically it was a um, um, follow up on the fifth money laundering directive of the European Union and uh, Cyprus was obliged to um, imp implement these rules in the national legislation. As you know, um, regulations of the European Union, they are directly um, applied in the member states, but the directive, they need also adoption of national legislation in order to apply these rules. So if, if you can see, directive was adopted in 18, but Cyprus um, uh, um, adopted um, and parliament approved the law in 2021, quite late, uh, but uh, still, um, uh, it was adopted and uh, the regulation was uh, based on the uh, fifth EU directive. And by the way, um, I will say uh, about this uh, a bit later, uh, specifically this fifth uh, anti-money laundering directive um, uh, got the rule about uh, beneficial uh, owners registers and about obligation of member states to uh, launch um, these registers in every member states and to uh, give the access to public and the initial um, directive uh, had a rule that um, uh, the public uh, will have i mean all um, physical and legal ent entities they will have access to these registers but i will say about this a bit later it was a bit changed uh, about tax incentives, basically the, the main um, point, I mean, why you, you, would, you would like to register the company in Cyprus, uh, it's uh, tax benefits, tax incentives, and uh, they are the following. We have uh, zero tax on any revenues from trading in securities and including shares. We have zero tax for all profits from the sale of real estate abroad. Uh, zero tax on dividends, as I said, paid out to the shareholders and um, they can be distributed as often as you wish. Uh, so um, it can be a distribution of interim dividends or um, upon completion, upon, upon finalization of financial statements uh, at the end of uh, financial year, you can distribute the income the company got and you will pay zero taxes. We have also zero tax on any dividends paid to, to the company by any other company in which it holds shares. So basically it's about subsidiaries. We have uh, many cases when stamp duties is zero, but of course uh, there are cases when stamp duty is obligatory to be paid. We have zero tax on profits of permanent establishments abroad. And um, if, if it's hotel, for example, restaurant, factory, and uh, 2.5 tax on intellectual property rights or so-called IP box. Um, as there are, of course, um, some conditions to uh, apply specifically this tax rate, uh, but it, it was basically um, uh, the huge development for Cyprus when it was adopted and many um, IT um, companies which have intellectual property rights, which are registered, uh, they uh, they got interested and they um, either relocated their companies to Cyprus or incorporated the new uh, companies and uh, started their business. Uh, about, uh, if we are talking about incorporation, of course, we have many um, um, company forms and uh, one of the most um, spread and most popular is private limited liability company by shares. 
Um, just a few words about this uh, form. I believe everybody knows, but just to remind, um, it's um, the company with one shareholder up to 50 shareholders. And of course, the company cannot um, offer its shares for subscription because in this case, it will be considered as public. Uh, such company has a share capital and the liability of its members is limited uh, by its memorandum and um, articles of association to any unpaid amount. So basically the um, um, payment for shares in the company, this, uh, this is the maximum of their liability. Uh, there is no minimum share capital for a private uh, limited liability company. And um, in case um, you are incorporated to this type of company, you can choose um, to use nominee shareholder, which will hold uh, shares in trust for the beneficial owner. In this case, um, of course, um, it's uh, necessary to sign, uh, as you can see on the slide, an agreement which will be stating that um, nominee shareholder doesn't have any financial interest in the, um, this company. And basically he's um, just working according to the instructions of the beneficial owner of the company uh, or engagement letter, it depends. Uh, it doesn't change um, much uh, the essence of this. Uh, and of course, um, it will be a trust deed or trust declaration signed between a trustee um, or nominee shareholder and the beneficial owner. Uh, also, uh, for the Cyprus company, uh, you can uh, employ, you can um, uh, get the services of director and secretary. In this case, you also need to sign with them an engagement letter or the agreement. Um, and um, the last sentence, I would like to, to say a bit more about this, um, about employment of local director for Cyprus company. Why it's so important? Uh, in Cyprus, in legislation, there is no rule directly stating that you need to have a local director. director. Why it's advisable? Uh, our tax authorities, although in tax uh, income tax law, we don't have some specific regulation, they are relying on the um, um, uh, OECD um, regulation and um, convention, uh, which states um, uh, rules about management of the company and control. And basically, the tax residence of the company is... Um, directly connected to the uh, management and control and the country from which management and uh, control is exercised uh, and uh, which are the factors um, that can prove basically that the company's management and control uh, are exercised from cyprus uh, first of all it's local director or directors uh, second as a um, uh, bookkeeping and audit and records are kept in the Cyprus office. So the registered office is in Cyprus, and this is also very important. Uh, also, the trade deals or agreements signed by companies, they are signed in this state. I mean, on the agreement, it's written that it was signed in Cyprus, for example. Also, um, we have... Um, uh, for example, uh, the issue of um, uh, uh, registered office, but registered office can be just provided address. Uh, lately, uh, there is a an development in European regulations regarding the establishment of substance for the companies registered in the European Union. Um, and uh, we have uh, the project of uh, so-called unshelled unshell directive. Uh, I don't know if somebody heard about this. Uh, the project was adopted, um, it was changed uh, and amended by the European Parliament this year, beginning of this year. And um, uh, from the beginning, it was expected that this unshell directive will be adopted this year and will be enforced next year. But uh, as we can see, um, directive will be delayed in um, you know, adoption and um, uh, adoption by European Council, which is the last stage uh, for the directive. 
And this uh, directive has rules to prevent the misuse of shell entities for tax purposes. Um, basically, this directive will be applicable to all the forms of the companies. So it's not only about private um, limited liability companies, uh, it's also about partnerships, um, basically about all the forms. And um, as a company specifically to which this directive will be um, applied, uh, it's the companies which have 65% uh, of their income, um, of their um, total income derived from uh, passive sources. So it's passive income. Uh, initially it was 75%, but now it's 65% um, rule. And uh, if uh, the 60% of entities uh, transactions, uh, they will cross border to transactions. And if um, the directorship is outsourced, so basically for the Cyprus entities, it will be very you know, very applicable as the directors are locals and beneficial owners usually are foreigners. And in this case, uh, for the company, it will be necessary to have premises uh, owned or rented. Um, it's also, um, there is um, a, an obligation to have a bank account, active bank account in European Union area. So it's not necessarily Cyprus, but it will be necessary to open in European uh, Union area. And uh, also, um, as I said, as a local director should be and majority of full-time employees. So if it's not only director who is acting on behalf of the company, I mean, who is acting in company uh, and we have employees, majority of them should be uh, Cypriots. But um, this directive, the most probably, will be uh, adopted uh, the next year, uh, as forecast says and will be applied from 2025. But there is a, a very, uh, I would say, strange provision, which you cannot find in any other directive. It's provision about two year backward period uh, that the companies will be checked if the uh, directive is enforced from 2025. They will be checked from January, 2023. So the substance, uh, it's better to establish uh, basically from now on, because um, as experts say, uh, the directive will be adopted in any case, uh, maybe with minor um, corrections, but the, um, the point is that the, um, for the companies that they have passive income and they employ a foreigner direct, foreign director, uh, it will be necessary to prove that they really have substance. So um, basically, it's not only local director, it's also other, um, other requirements, which we will have very soon. Uh, when you incorporate uh, the company, of course, first of all, you are um, uh, deciding on the form of this company, you are making business plan, and uh, what are the following steps. According to the fifth Simul Directive, which was mentioned before, and I am a law adopted uh, by Cyprus, um, the first step is submission of uh, know your client documents to the provider who will be incorporating the company for you. Uh, these uh, documents, which you can see, th these are the main documents. Uh, of course, um, it can be um, um, additional uh, points um, in the list, but the main it, it's a passport or um, ID. So the document uh, which allows to identify the beneficial owner, a recent utility bill which confirms his um, permanent residency. Uh, and source of income uh, and source of wealth information, uh, which is usually um, provided in the form of tax declaration or pay slips or um, any other information which can prove um, the sources of wealth which was gained in previous years and to a source of current income. And of course, I didn't put the specific documents because it can be quite different. I mean, depending on the case. 
um, the next step is uh, to choose uh, the name for your company. Uh, the provider of administrative services needs to check the name if it's uh, already in the registrar of company, so it's uh, free. In this case, we can reserve this name for the newly incorporated company. But there is an alternative. You can purchase a shelf company which was incorporated previously, and this company usually doesn't have doesn't maintain bank account. It doesn't have any bank, uh, doesn't have any business activity. Um, and basically, you are buying existing empty company, and you are continue you continue to use it. It's quite fast because you don't need the time for approval by registrar the name and to wait for this approval. So, uh, quite good option. Uh, as a next step, um, it's signing of memorandum. Of course, memorandum and article of association should be drafted according to your um expectation what uh, you want the company will uh, will be doing um, so the business activities the goals of the company will be included in the memorandum and um as a memorandum uh, and articles of association should be signed by the shareholder so as we said you can use nominee shareholder in this case he will sign or she will sign. In case the beneficial owner is a direct shareholder and you are not using the service of nominee shareholder, um, basically you are signing and you need to provide this uh, memorandum for the registration of company. Uh, the next step after incorporation, um, I didn't include this in the, in the slide, but uh, it's um, necessary. It's um, obtaining a tax identification number for the company. And after you will go to the bank for the bank account opening. Usually the process of incorporation takes uh, seven, 10 work days, depending um, on the workload of registrar of companies. But uh, this period uh, I mentioned, it's for the registration, um, uh, for the reservation of name and for approval of name, and specifically you will need two, three days uh, separately. Uh, there is a state use, uh, which is um, quite popular um, among foreigners um, coming to Cyprus, um, non-domiciled resident in Cyprus. Uh, and in this case, if you, for example, you incorporate the company and you will be employed uh, as an employee in your company, you can uh, apply for the tax residents in Cyprus, but to have at the same time non-domiciled stat status. Um, this status is provided if you get it for 17 years. Uh, so after that, it will be uh, not valid. Um, and there are two ways how to become tax resident in Cyprus. Uh, the basic rule, which is used in most of the European countries and not only Europeans, in it's 183 days rule. Um, and when you are um, residing in the country more than uh, 183 days during the tax year, so it's a ground for um, application for tax residency. And there is a 60 day rule uh, to become a Cyprus tax resident and there are additional conditions which uh, will be need uh, will need to be fulfilled in order to get um, non domiciled resident status in this case so basically it's 60 day presence during uh, tax year um, in Cyprus, it's maintenance of permanent residence in Cyprus, uh, no matter it's uh, owned or rented. It's um, the rule not to resign in any other country for the period more than 183 days. Uh, sorry, um, you shouldn't be tax resident in any other country during the tax year, and you need to do business in Cyprus. And for example, you have your own uh, Cyprus company and you're employed in it, so it will be a basis for the application for this status. Bank account. As I said, after you incorporate the company, uh, you get certificates, you, you get your memorandum and articles of association, uh, you apply for 
actually um, administrative service um, provider will apply for you uh, for the tax identification number and af after that you can proceed with the bank account opening um, what is the procedure and what are the benefits um, basically banking system of cyprus is as any um, other system of european union banks uh, provides all the solutions, all the services, and we have uh, no minimum startup deposit. It was um, used in many European countries. Uh, so in order to um, open the bank account and to make it uh, active, you need to deposit a specific amount of money. In Cyprus, we don't have this rule, but um, in order to activate the account which was opened uh, you need to transfer just a small amount of money so the bank will see that uh, the bank account uh, is already used by the company or by the individual uh, the fees are quite low um, of course it's not for free um, but um, the fees are more or less low and you can check on uh, the websites of the banks i mean before proceeding for example with specific banks you can check their tables of fees and to see specifically how much they charge for transaction for maintenance etc and uh, always uh, online banking solution is provided. It's like must uh, for all banks and for all uh, electronic money institutions. Uh, we have digital era now, so um, it's like uh, you cannot imagine the bank without uh, e-banking services. Uh, if we are talking about types of the bank accounts uh, that you can open in Cyprus, uh, not only for the for your company, for example, but on, uh, also for for you as physical person, um, because it's quite beneficial, I would say, to open bank account as well for the beneficial owner of the company, for example, for the transfer of dividends from your company. And you can open a bank account for physical person. We have different procedures for Cyprus residents. Uh, by the way, one more plus, one more benefit of becoming a Cyprus resident. It's quite easy, quite simple procedure. And um, the branches of the banks, they are opening bank accounts for residents. It's simplified um, compliance check. I mean, this know your client documents, they are required, of course, about which I said when you need to incorporate the company for the bank you will also need them but uh, the check is quite quite simple and um, it's very fast procedure for non-residents um, there is a specific procedures and um, it this procedure is handled by international business units uh, so all the banks all cyprus banks they have ibus and um, in order to to apply uh, you need um, to submit all relevant documents i will uh, say about them uh, and also to have a meeting with the bank either in person or teams or skype meeting depend, depending on the bank they're using different um, programs but you can have uh, online meeting and to um, basically to speak with the bank to explain your goals uh, what the company will be doing uh, and to proceed with a bank account opening, but it takes more time than for locals. Uh, there is also a corporate bank account for the company, which you can open, you need to open uh, for the company to be active. Uh, there is a type of accounts, merchant accounts, which are used by the companies, um, uh, which receive card payments. So um, it's for the sellers of goods through internet for example uh, when you have card payments you will need merchant accounts and all the banks providing this service also the banks uh, are providing the service of escrow accounts they are not so widely used um, it's uh, the account basically which is used by the third party when it holds um, deposit for um, uh, the uh, companies or individuals which are in agreement and they are expecting the transfer um, amount of money um, but for the simple uh, LTD you will need um, corporate bank account as a second one and 
I would advise really um, from my experience as a first, uh, it's uh, account for physical person for beneficial owner. If we are talking about bank account opening documents, um, the documents on the slides, on the slide, uh, it's uh, the list of documents for individuals. The main, um, it's passport and recent utility bill. Uh, I would like to mention that as a passport for Europeans, if it's a citizen of European Union, it needs to be certified by notary or advocate. Or like in Cyprus, we don't have notaries, we have certifying officers. And uh, translate it in English or in Greek. And um, a recent utility bill, uh, it's uh, basically utility bill for water, gas, um, landline, telephone, um, um, any any other um, I mean any other things um, depending on the country, uh, and this utility bill should be um, not older than six months. It should be translated and it should be certified. But for the citizens of the countries which are outside of uh, EU, uh, apostille is also needed. So the bank will um, need apostille documents with apostille translations. Also, um, uh, always the banks are requesting professional CV uh, in order to see what uh, the ultimate beneficial owner of the company or individual, if it's individual bank account application was doing, um, what kind of background he has. And um, it's uh, very um, often uh, that the banks are requesting reference letters uh, from other banks. Basically, if you have a local bank account in your country, uh, you can show the reference letter stating that you are a client of specific bank from the date uh, and um, with no um, specifics, but um, uh, for the bank, it will be uh, like plus that you already uh, have a bank account. Some financial institution already checked you if you are a good client. So if you are... Uh, maintaining already as a bank account, it would be uh, quite beneficial. And the, um, the last, uh, but I guess um, the, ma the main point for the bank, it's uh, the provision of um, documents proving source of income and source of wealth. And as I said before, usually the banks are requesting tax declarations for the previous years, uh, like a few years um, from the current date. Uh, immovable property, it can be title deeds, for example, provided pay slips if you are employed. Uh, if you have shares in other companies and you uh, get uh, dividends and this is your main source of income, you can provide corporate documents for this company, uh, financial statements uh, and uh, resolutions, for example, on distribution of dividends, uh, which will be showing that uh, you got as a beneficial owner of the company, the dividends from your company. Of course, uh, these are the documents which need um, to be provided by the individual. Uh, if we are talking about opening of the corporate bank account, uh, of course, uh, we will need to provide corporate um, certificates, memorandum, which we received after incorporation of the company. Uh, we will need to provide to the bank a tax identification number, which usually is um, uh, obtained um, straight after incorporation of the company. And um, trust deed. So um, the bank always, and um, it, it's, it was always like this um, in previous years, uh, currently, uh, the bank always knows who is the beneficial owner. And uh, even if the structure of Cyprus company, for example, is quite complicated and shareholders are other companies and behind them are other companies, uh, the bank will always request the documents uh, in order to identify who is uh, the, the physical person, beneficial owner behind all these entities. Uh, if we are talking about pricing policy of the banks, as I said, you can always check it uh, on the website of specific bank. It's very easy as they are all um, posting this information for public. But um, 
for you to know, it's um, always bank account uh, review fee. Uh, the bank accounts um, are reviewed every three years if the risk of the client as per evaluation of the bank is medium and every year if the client is uh, a high risk and uh, the bank will uh, make bank account review and the bank banks are charging for this. There are also maintenance fees which are charged um, from every uh, corporate bank accounts. They are quite low, but they are monthly fees. Uh, dormant accounts fees, um, basically it's additional maintenance fee, uh, which will be charged in case your company is not um, having currently any business activity and you don't have incoming outgoing transfers. Uh, and closure of the bank account fee, but it's not always charged. Uh, previously, it was um, uh, wide, widely spread practice to charge for the closure of bank accounts. Currently, many banks are not charging. And in the center, you can see compliance fees. Uh, this fee can be additionally charged to the bank account review, to the maintenance fee, and also for monitoring of transactions. So, um, for example, um, in the case, uh, it's obligation of all the banks to monitor all the transactions um, which are made through individual or corporate bank account. And in case you have a new counterparty, uh, you need to provide all the documents which support your transaction. Incoming or outgoing, doesn't matter. The bank needs to know why this money are going, where they are going and for whom and for which purpose or why they are coming to your account. Uh, so basically uh, what banks wants to see or wants to receive, it's um, agreement if uh, it's uh, there is an agreement between parties if it's uh, trading and uh, transaction it's invoice um, it can be also a um, simple um, request for the um, corporate documents of the counterparty but it's very rare and uh, the bank usually charges compliance fees if it's a uh, quite big transaction if it's the first transaction with this counterparty so they are doing the additional review but it's um, not very often uh, these fees are charged uh, because um, I mean for the simple transactions for the small amounts uh, the banks are charging normal fees uh, which you can find in their tables um, as I said banks as I know our UBOs, but not only banks. And as I mentioned, uh, we had this rule firstly um, imposed by the FIFS uh, anti money laundering directive. And um, as a rule was about a disclosing uh, of information and about launching the beneficial owners registers by each EU member. Uh, beneficial owners, who are they? Uh, basically, these are the people who are holding shares directly or indirectly or through their companies, and they have the control over the companies. And um, initially, it was the idea that all the beneficial owners uh, who uh, have 10% and more, they will be shown in the registrar. But uh, Cyprus... Um, adopted the rule about 25 plus one percent of voting shares uh, or rights so um, basically the beneficial owners uh, who have 25 percent and more they will be shown those who have uh, less than 25 percent they are not shown and as i said initially as access to the register of beneficial owners was granted to the public. So basically any company, any individual could make a request through the registrar of company and to get information on the UBO. But uh, in 2022, the um, situation has changed. It was a case um, in Luxembourg District Court, which was brought by the individual beneficial owner of the Luxembourg company, uh, which was um, asking the court to restrict the access to the, his information because uh, it was 
against, it was considered as infringement of his uh, fundamental right for private life and personal data. Uh, the Luxembourg court um, he has asked the court of justice with regards to this matter and to decide if um, there is a ground uh, to restrict the access to this information about UBOs uh, for public. And um, in, on the 22nd of November 2022, the Court of Justice of the European uh, Union, in the joint cases, you can see them on the screen, um, has um, take um, a decision uh, to restrict uh, the access to all the beneficial owners and uh, the provision of the fifth anti-money laundering directive uh, providing um, access to general public was um, considered and is considered from that date as invalid. So the registrar of companies uh, has announced as well suspension of access to the UBO's uh, register uh, for members of general public. And we have now quite limited list of people who have who can have access to this register. Uh, Paulina, sorry yes. to interrupt you. Uh, we need to start finishing your lecture and move to the next uh, presenter. Uh, I would like you uh, to look at the chat because there are a lot of questions yes. uh, the on the topics that you discussed. So if you can uh, review them and uh, answer, and then we, will, we need to forward to Rami Arye. Yes, yes, just a second. I will uh, finish the last slide. So you can see on the slide okay, the list you. of um, persons who can have currently the access uh, to the um, UBOS register in Cyprus. And about electronic money institutions, uh, alternative for the banks, um, you can see on the slide, basically they are providing similar services as the banks but they are not providing services of uh, credit and um, investment advice. Uh, and we have um, um, basically many registered and licensed EMIs currently in Cyprus, so it can be considered as alternative for the bank account opening to open bank ac uh, an account with electronic money institution. Okay. Um, Just a second. Um, your questions. About taxation, uh, these questions uh, I cannot answer in uh, details because I'm not tax advisor. Uh, it's um, better uh, to to ask the tax advisor. Um, Yeah, well, what is the minimum amount needed to buy real estate in order to gain a resident status? It's my colleague, uh, Mr. George Claridis, will be um, uh, saying about a purchase of real estate and about residence in the country. We have um, provisions uh, how you can um, get residency in Cyprus. About uh, taxation in Israel, uh, you need to ask uh, our Israeli colleagues, uh, they will advise you. I can only say about Cyprus. Yes, about um, a rent uh, of property. Uh, the question is, um, I mean, there are a lot of additional questions uh, because the property can be residential, it can be commercial. You can um, rent it on a um, um, daily basis. You can rent it on a long-term basis and the taxation will differ. So uh, basically, if you have this question, you need to uh, ask and to provide the details. Um, about hiring uh, of Israelis with uh, Cyprus company, um, as a, 
uh, if it's offline and you need uh, to bring Israeli citizens in Cyprus, you need um, to um, to get for them uh, Cyprus residency. And there is a specific procedure, but it's one huge lecture for, for this. Um, of course, they can work uh, online for the company and uh, their services can be outsourced. Um, Yeah, about um, yeah citizens of Israel who have European passports. Um, from the beginning, I would advise to use European um, documents, European ID and European passport. Um, as I said, it's more simple procedure because you don't need to provide apostille documents. You need to pro provide just apostille documents. And what you need to bring to Cyprus or to send to Cyprus, because uh, even for physical persons, you can have only online meeting with the bank. It's passport, utility bill, but you need to make them certified and translated, uh, depending on the European country in which, for example, it's Spanish or, I don't know, Italian, you need to translate them. Uh, of course, not passport, just a utility bill. And the bank can also request proof of wealth, proof of income, and uh, your uh, professional CV. Um, uh, okay, uh, the question is, uh, what happens when the bank go goes bankrupt? Um, uh, I, I don't think um, now it's possible the same situation as we, ha as we had in um, 13, 14 uh, with uh, the Lakey Bank. Uh, because of the regulations, uh, just the system will not allow the, the, for the bank to go bankrupt, I believe. So I would not uh, consider this worst case scenario. Yeah, a good question about 25% uh, um, of the company, if it's uh, owned by other structures that has number of small owners and how to proceed with compliance in this case in Cyprus banks. Um, I would like to mention that uh, the rule about 25%, it's only for beneficial owners register. Uh, for the banks, you need to provide all the information, even for the small owners of the shares. Even if it's found, even if it's trust, you need to provide everything, all the information. The bank will need to identify all beneficial owners.